Lewis structure of cesium phosphide, cesium bonding with phosphorus. Now, this staircase on periodic tables separates the metals from the non-metals. Cesium on the far left is definitely a metal, and phosphorus is just above the staircase. It's a non-metal. That's important because when metals and non-metals combine, you get ionic compounds, and ionic means you need to transfer electrons from one atom to another, always from metal to non-metal. Let's watch that happen. Cesium, here we are in group one, brings one valence electron with it. So draw yourself the symbol CS with a single dot. Great. Phosphorus is in group 15. I want you to draw it with five valence electrons. That's how many are in its outer shell in its neutral form. Now, non-metals, except for hydrogen, always want a full outer shell of eight electrons. Phosphorus brings five, so it needs three more. Where is it gonna get them? Well, it can get one from this cesium, but where is it gonna get the extra two? The only answer is you need more cesiums to make it happen. Draw yourself two more. Show this cesium giving its electron away and this cesium giving its electron away. Phosphorus, which brought five, now gets three extra. That is eight electrons in its outer shell, a full octet, and it is stable. So now we are done. Draw your phosphorus with its now full outer shell of eight electrons. And because that is three more than it brought, we'll give it a minus three charge. Likewise, each of the cesiums no longer has its one valence electron, so don't draw that extra dot and give it a plus one charge. It lost a minus charge, which means net it is positive one. And you'll have to draw this three times because there are three cesiums. There we go. This here in blue is the completed Lewis structure for cesium phosphide. This is us showing the transfer as it happens. Absolutely beautiful, just like you are. Best of luck.